Hey guys, how's everybody doing? This is CP Cards and Dice for Tabletop Baseball TV, and I am going over the deep drive baseball charts in what is called uh, Deep Drive Baseball The Charts tutorial. Uh, this is a 15 minute presentation of the charts just to kind of uh, acclimate you a little bit to the different parts. Now, uh, you know, saying the charts makes it seem, wow, this is like overwhelming. Um, and I think it's, ex it's exactly the opposite. So it's a little bit of a misnomer calling, you know, uh, there is the chart for the rules. These are all the rules, basically, right here. This side of the paper and this side. Now, what I did with, with these is that I laminated them. So because, you know, you do a lot of handling just to make them last and not to beat them up and not to get them all filthy. Um, it's easy enough, you know, my, the place where I go knows me. A lot of times I'll do it for free. It depends, you know, if, so anyway, this is the deep drive rules. It has player cards, dice. Now check out a couple of things you can check out. Check our, check out our Facebook page for deep drive baseball and check out also there's constant, uh, updates there and, uh, games played samples, and there are videos, tutorials, and so on and so forth. When people ask questions, I kind of make a video. Because if one person has the question, guess what happens? A lot of people have the question. So uh, when, I, when guys say, hey, I'm having trouble with this, that, and the other, I'll make a video just for them, and I'll go slow over it, and I'll kind of give you my uh, understanding of it and, and my uh, perspective on it, and that may help you figure it out. Sometimes, you know, you have to, uh, well, Generally speaking, the brain requires multiple interactions with information before it really uh, makes some sense of it, you know, connects it to previous, previously learned information. Anyway, you get the dice information. The way you play uh, deep drive baseball is three ten-sided dice, D10. Uh, how to play, and it, it does basically simple, explains what all the short terms mean, FD7, FD8, FD9, deep flyouts, right? Basic stuff outs, the different outs that you have and how they're represented. Four is second base, five is third base. This is like 101, baseball, tabletop baseball 101. Rare readings, rare readings and how you do that. And I went over that in the cards section. The rare reading is there's a number there. It says rare. Whenever it comes up on the pitcher card, let's say, and you got to go back to the batter card to read it, uh, you would then look. In other words, if, if it says – if it's a base on balls on a pitcher card, but you go back to the batter card and it says rare base on balls, what that means is that that batter doesn't walk very much and you have to look at the green die. And if it's lower than the rare rating, then it would be – it would uh, it would be good. If it's above the rare rating, then it's no good and there's no walk. Okay? That's, how we, that's how that works. Um I'm looking around to see if I have a player with a rare rating so I can show you. But I don't want to get into the cards right now because I want to stay on the, uh, the charts. Um, if you have trouble with that, I will make a video on how to read those. Uh, but that's information here. Then stealing bases. This is very straightforward, and we'll look at the charts now. Well, pitches, pass balls, balks, and pickoffs. We'll look at the charts. Playing the infield in. That's pretty much here. Uh, playing the infield in at the corners. That's, you know, basic 101 again. Playing the outfield in that I haven't used that. That's interesting. So add one to all outfield range ratings. That's interesting. All right. Playing it safe on the bases. That's simple. Makes sense. Pitcher endurance. That's another thing that uh, I did not go over when I went over the cards. And that's probably, I have to do probably a video on that because a lot of people ask, ask me about that. Batter pitcher advantages. Uh, that's another video right there. And starting pitcher uh, rest, that's f uh, fundamental. And outfielders deep drives. Um, zero to two, use the left fielder. Three to six, use the center fielder. And seven to nine, use the right fielder. Very simple. If that's it. Those are the rules for the game. So everything else is straightforward now. Here are the defensive charts. You got the – now, this is the 2019 charts. Every season has a, a unique chart, right, because the things happen a little bit differently. Now, I have these color-coded, and I have these color-coded because I don't have to read what it says on the chart until I grab the chart. Like, if the chart, I have it off to my left. I know the green is always my defense. 
So that comes up. I just grab the green chart. And the blue is my choice chart, right? And the blue is also my uh, infield ground out and my outfield chart and my runner chart. So immediately if I have a runner situation or a, a ground ball or a fly ball situation, I grab my blue chart. I don't have to say, oh, which chart is this? Wait, what side is that? Is that the right side? No. I say, oh, that's my blue chart. That's my green chart. So I color coded them to simplify it and make my game plan a little bit quicker. Let's look at defensive charts. So here, let's say you roll, let's say on the card, uh, let's get Wilbur Wood. I'm playing the 71 season, having a blast. You can check out some of those videos. Wilbur Wood, um, I get uh, defense, 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 right? A defensive result is 69 to 71. So let's say I roll a 60, uh, 60, uh, 69, right? I roll 69. All right, so that says defense. So now I have to go over to the defensive chart. I don't look at 69 directly. This just tells me, hey, dummy, go to the defensive chart. So I'm going to re-roll, and it's a 0, 0. That's automatically says, hey, look, roll again on the error chart. It tells you. And this is the error chart right here. Now, 71 season is opposite. It has the error chart on this side and the defensive chart on this side. Okay, I don't know why it's done that way. It just, and it th really threw me off because I have a system, mental system. And plus the numbers are a little bit different for 71. It's 0, 0 to 36. And then you have to go to the um, – uh, uh, let me see. Where is it? You see on this side, uh, roll again on the range chart. On 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 uh, over here it says roll again on the error chart. So here it makes you go to the error chart. Seventy one makes you go to the range chart. A little bit different, and that threw me off. That was a struggle at first, but now I'm good with it. Um, so then, if you roll, what, what I roll zero zero, I go and I have to roll on the error chart. So let's roll on the error chart, and that's a twenty three. All right, a twenty three would say it's a ground ball to the pitcher. Let's check the pitcher rating, 23. Our pitcher is Wilbur Wood. His uh, his rating is a four. That's his defensive rating. It's right on top there, defensive rating. So a four pitcher, comebacker, 23. You go across, he's a four. It's a G1. That means it's a comebacker to Wood. He feels his position, throws him out of first. Okay. Now, if Wilbur Wood was a two, E1, he bobbles, fumbles it. Drops, picks it up, fires the first high throw. Everybody's safe, and he's charged with an error. Okay, it's on an E1. Uh, if he were a 2, let's say. If he were a 3, he'd still get the ball at 23. If you roll a different number, if you roll a 25, well, guess what? Uh, he's a, Let's say he was an E3, he's going to make an error now. But it's still, as a 4, he's still, he's a still good fielder. Now, let's say you roll a 27. Well, now he's really in trouble. Only a 5 pitcher, the top fielding players will make that play, okay? And there's even a possibility for a two-base error. If Wilbur Wood is a one, he's going to make a two-base error, okay? So he's going to throw it high over the first baseman's head. It's going to kind of bounce around in right field until the right fielder gets it and hustling around first going into second base is whoever was at the plate, okay? That's how you read it. It's just cross-reference. It's just column and row. And you look at the pitcher's uh, uh, defensive rating, which is right at the top there, okay? And that's true for every single player, okay? So let's say a different situation. Uh, Campanera's shortstop is a three. So let's just say we roll, uh, right? We end up on the Wilbur. We roll on 69, which are 70 or 71. says defense. Okay, we go to defense, and we're going to roll a 60, a 66. Nope, has to be higher than that. Uh, 68. 68 takes us to the shortstop part of the chart. You got, look how this works, right? It's here, it's go to the error chart, then it becomes catcher. This is all range. This is all range here. This whole section is range. This whole section is error. 2019. Uh, I guess we're going to have that season for a long time because I don't know if they're going to have a 2020 season. First base, second base, third base, shortstop, 67 to 76. We roll the 68. And we're going to look. He's a three shortstop. We roll a 68. So you cross column, row, and it says G6. That means it's a ground ball. Medium ground ball to shortstop. Makes the play. Right? But let's say we would have rolled a 72. 
Let's just make it a 72. Remember, he's a three shortstop. It says it right there, three. He's a three shortstop, and we rolled a, a 70. We roll a 73 on a three shortstop is a single. Gets by him. He doesn't make the play. Dives and does not make the play. Okay? It gets by him into center field or left field or whatever if we rolled a 73. And that's how that works. Now, the worse the fielder, right, the more advantage it is to the batter and to the runner as well. So if you have – you don't want to have a, a, a team with a lot of one, two, and zero fielding players. That would be just uh, not, not, you know, not very conducive to, to victory at all. So those, those are the defensive charts. I'm just checking the time. I spent a lot of time on those. I'm going to move forward now. Now uh, the, the pitcher has a, a uh, wild pitch rating, a balk rating, and a pickoff rating, uh, and that's going to be all represented here. When there's a batter on uh, – when there's a runner on base, we have to roll – to the six, and if we roll a zero to zero five, right? Zero to zero five, so let's say it's a zero three, that's in the middle. Then we're gonna have to re roll, it says roll again on pitcher, cat uh, pitcher catcher chart, which is this one. Then we're gonna roll, let's see what it says. It says 86. 86 says if the catcher is not rated to play the position, it's a pass ball. That's in case you had an emergency catcher. All right, let's say we roll a 66. 66 says wild pitch, automatic wild pitch. But if we roll a 51, 51 says if pitcher is rated a B, C, D, or F, it's wild pitch. And he's a B, so that would be definitely wild pitch. But if we roll like a 30, 31, it'll say – if pitcher wild pitch rating is a D or an F, it's a wild pitch. He is not a D or an F. He's a B. Here's a wild pitch rating. Here's the balk rating, and here's the pickoff rating. Balks don't happen that often. This is a rare play event. Pickoff don't, doesn't happen that often. The one that happens mostly is the wild pitch. Every so often you get a pass ball. Again, that depends on the pass ball rating of the catcher. If it's really bad, you'll get, you'll get those. Stolen base chart, very simple. All right, because you're going to get every every player has a a, a running rating. Okay, he's got a running rating. Uh, let's look at a guy like uh, like Gene Tennis. He's got a one, not a really a base runner. So he's going to have a low rating, and that's going to be zero to eight. Well, he's a he's a one B. Uh, if it hasn't been modified, and it can get modified by the pitcher's hold rating and the catcher's throw rating. We're not looking at that right now because that's the card stuff. I, I think I went through that. But he's a 1B. If the, the 1B would be 0 to 6 would be a stolen base. 7 to 8 would be a caught stealing. Otherwise, he just doesn't get the jump. Nothing happens. So you're really looking for low numbers. But once you get to guys like, you know, uh, Lou Brock and uh, Ricky Henderson, it goes all the way up to 7. And he's probably an A, so it's like a 60% chance that he's safe. Um. And that sort of thing, okay? And he and he can even go up to eight or nine, and that would be an eighty percent chance that he's safe for stolen base. You know, so it's really all about who the runner is, and just kind of rolling to see if you get if you roll low. All right, so uh, I'm not a big stolen base guy anyway, so I, I really don't worry about that too much. Okay, so my other chart is going to have your choice chart. This is when you decide. It gives you a question mark on the base running chart right here. It says question mark. That means you can try it on the choice chart. Try to take the extra base. If you want to go first to third, you're going to roll on this chart right here. It's about 60% that you're safe. There you would most likely be safe, 65. Um, for 65 to be safe, you would definitely need a fast runner going from first to third. Okay, so you want him to be fast. If two outs, he'd probably make it. Um, so it's between 60 and 70%, depending. This goes up to 69. So I'd say generally I'm going to try my extra bases with fast. If I'm really fe feeling like, you know, uh, frisky, I'm going to go up to 60, 42 to 60. But it goes all the way from 5, from 5 to 60. So that's like 55% that he's going to be safe. You have to be, you know, considerate when you're take, trying to take extra bases I recommend taking extra bases with the guys that are at least fast because that brings you up, up to 70. If he's very fast, brings you up, up to 
Okay, so it's hard to become very fast. Some fast guys will become very fast with two outs. You get a bump up with two outs. Over here is your bunt, and this is self-explanatory. If he makes a regular out, the way you 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 roll a bump a bunt is just just roll. It's like there's no bunt rating for guys. Uh, you just roll, and then if he makes an out, there's a chance to get the lead runner, and you can try for the lead runner, or you can just accept the the, the sacrifice uh, hit. In other words, the the uh, sacrifice, yeah, and you can accept that and just move forward and just you know get the guy to second base, and that's how usually I do it. Every so often I'll read this. If if I know there's a really slow guy on base, I may try to get the lead runner. But you gotta let's see what it says. You can attempt to play the lead runner if batter if making the play a lead runner find their speed and the fielder rating on the chart. If the roll and the, uh, and roll a die. If the roll is within the range shown, runner is out. So you look at the fielding rating column of the, of the player and then the run rating. And then you can see 0 to 4, he would be out under a 3 if he was just an average. So then you can try for the lead runner. If you don't get him, then you're stuck. Now you got two guys on base. Right? So anyway, and my last part of the chart, that's it. There's only four sides. There's no more chart. This is a ground ball out chart. Like with a runner on first, um, a hard hit ground ball with a runner on first is an E, and E's lead runner is out at the front end of the double play. That's usually what happens with the hard, with the hard hit um, ground balls, right? If there's a runner on second, obviously it's not that. If there's a runner on first and second, it's going to be a J. So a hard hit ground ball to, let's say, the shortstop. Hard hit ground ball to the shortstop with runners on first and second is going to be a P. And a P, you go to the letter, and it tells you what it is. If fielder is a five, lead runner is out or is a very slow runner. Okay, defensive manager can't throw them out of third on a fielder's choice. Otherwise, run second on front end of a double play. So we'd be a double player. You can go for the runner on third. You know, if you have, like, a really good fielder or if it's a very slow runner. Okay, so it gives you like some choices here, but generally speaking, you're going to get a double play on a hard hit ball. That's like a tailor made double play on a slow hit ball. Usually, it's just the runner advances. Like there's a runner on, you know, there's a little number to shortstop. There's a runner on first. There's only one play, and that's the first, and that's an H. Runner advances. That's what happens normally. You either get a double play or a runner advances. I mean, you know, and sometimes it'll give you different choices, different letters on different on unique situations, like bases loaded. A comebacker, an, uh, an average speed comebacker back to the pitcher is a B. And a B says lead runner forced out. So the, uh, the ball right back to the pitcher is going to throw home with the bases loaded. He's going to get that force out. Other runners advance. All right? Safe on fielder's choice. The batter is safe on fielder's choice. So common sense. This is just common sense. Okay? Um, if it's a hard hit ball to the pitcher with the bases loaded, it's an E. So now he may be able to lead runners out on the front of the double play. Of course, it was hit hard. It was like zap. Right in his glove, turns around, throws home, it goes back to first, double play. This is like totally intuitive. If you've ever played baseball or know baseball or coached baseball or watched baseball, you can usually figure that out if you have common sense and you don't have to, you know, struggle with it. Now, I'm a little bit past my 15 minutes. I'm going to finish up. This is the runner chart. This tells you does he advance the extra base? And it, you look at this runner is, is a blank runner, and that's not, that's based on the metrics. He was kind of in the middle in terms of runs scored in the league. So he's not uh, – so they figure out what the average is. They normalize it. They get him uh, uh, an average. And then if he's above the average, he's faster. Uh, if he's below the average, he's slower. He's just about average for his at-bats and, and so, on, so on and so forth. So uh, average is – there is a blank. He's blank. And there is a blank right here. So that's representative of something, right? And um, – and sometimes he has a choice. Other times he cannot advance the extra base. Like he'll, he won't go to third on a single. And other times on a double, he may be able to score from, uh, from, uh, from first. He can try it. And you don't know what's going to happen. So you can always do something. Like he can go from first to third, but on a, on a single that's in the gap. Not on a single line drive right at the fielder. It's going to say this guy is not fast enough to try that. But if he's fast, he can try that. And he may be fast. Tennis could become a fast runner or an effective runner, really. That's what fast means if there's two outs. 
All right, so I went over that. I went over the 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 uh, uh, ground ball outs chart. This is the fly ball outs chart. Same thing. It tells you when you can advance. Deep fly to right, you're going to score on a sacrifice fly. Any deep, any deep, you know, usually a deep fly is going to score the guy. It's going to say yes, right? If he's a, uh, you know, if he's a average and above, it's always going to be yes, yes, yes. If he's a really slow guy, it's going to be question mark. If it's deep, otherwise it's going to be no, which makes sense. So can a slow guy score? Yes, depends on the fly ball. Very slow guy can score as well, depending on the fly ball. But more often than not, he's not going to be able to, to advance. Uh, and the last one is the hit and run chart. This is common sense. You know, line drives or double plays. Uh, otherwise, ground balls, he advances, that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, strike. Uh, then there's hit by pitch, defense, follow the defensive chart, foul ball if it's a hit by pitch, base on ball, check modifier. You roll. Uh, you look at the modifier die, which is the green die, and a nine would mean roll again. A one to five would be a foul, foul ball. A zero would be a ball lead runner caught stealing. So it's it's a just a cool system. And here, of course, I already went through that. Those are all the letters pertaining to the ground balls. Then it tells you double play, double plays. There's actually a modifier for guys that don't hit many double plays. There's a little double play number. But that's it. I went over everything here. Uh, yep. Oh, I did it all. So this is uh, this is deep drive baseball. It's a lot of fun. It's very simple. You get the whole season and all the charts and everything. All the charts, the two charts, um, for twelve dollars on their site. It's a fun game. It's nice to have around, and it's light. It's a combination. It's light, but it has it does have detail. It's detailed. It, you know, it has a lot of unique characteristics. It's it's a, it's a modern game. It's metrics based. He'll tell you. You'll ask him, "Hey, why did he get this rating? Why did this guy get this rating?" He'll tell you, "Well, he was in the, you know, he was in the gray area. So we could have bumped him up, but I decided not to do it, kind of because he was a little bit closer to the to the norm." And you know, he'll tell you. He looks at the metrics to create all the ratings. Now it's a 50-50 game, and uh, it's zero to forty-nine off the batter, and then fifty to ninety-nine off the pitcher. And, but you have interaction because you have a ballpark card. So some ballparks allow home runs very easily. Others, they're very stingy with, with home runs. So you have to look at that. I'm going to be playing a game in a little while. It's going to be the Oakland A's uh, versus the Chicago White Sox. It's going to be Wilbur Wood versus – I'm don't even, I'm not going to find them. Oh, wait. Maybe I'll find them here perhaps. I see his, his blue card because I had to pull him from the Yankees. Rob Gardner, he came over. Uh, eventually gets traded to the Yankees. Right now he's with the A's. Rob Gardner is going to pitch, and uh, and that's it. So this is CP Cards and Dice, and I hope you enjoyed the presentation of the deep drive charts. Um, it's a very simple game. You can try it out for a dollar, <laughs> you know, and and it's really a diamond. It, it's a diamond in the rough or a hidden gem, is what I like to call it. Uh, it's got a little bit of APA. It's got a little bit of strat. It's got a little bit of payoff pitch and inside pitch because the city that status pro has, you know, how status pro has the three charts and that's it. Well, you know, this is kind of the same thing. This has two charts back and front and then it has the rules set. Um, I like it. It's fun. It's an easy game to buy and to have around and to every, every so often, you know, you roll a game. Um, they have about five, six, seven different seasons. They have the 2019 season. I'm, I'm replaying the Mets using the 2019 season. and Oh, and by the way, you get every single player. That's right. Every single player, even the guy that had one at bat or the guy that pitched one inning. Look at this guy. This guy pitched 10 innings, and I got him. He's starting in this game because he actually started in this game. I play actual lineups because I, like, I love the historical aspect of it. This guy had played in six games, 10 innings pitched, seven strikeouts, and he has a card, age 20, looks like 26. 253 ERA. And he has a whole card there. And I think he has a batting card. Oh, no, he doesn't have a batting card. They didn't go that far. It doesn't go that low. Uh, but he doesn't have a batting card. But I'm using a pitcher batting card. They have pitcher batting cards. See? They give you all the letters. And the great thing about this is on PDF. So guess what? I, I write on these. I'll I'll make notes on these. I'll, you know, like, like here, I was saying something, and I don't know, I made a note on it. Look, this catcher has no uh, arm rating. So that means there's not going to be a negative or a positive modifier on a base dealer. So if there's no rating, that means he doesn't have a rating. How do you know that? It's because this video is telling you that. That's the way the system works. 
And you can see that. You know, you can see some guys have ratings, some guys don't have ratings because it's either, you know, a plus, a minus, or a no rating. That's what you get. And the guy didn't say, why am I going to waste ink to put a no rating? I'll just leave it blank. That was his philosophy. He, if, he, if he was happy with it, I don't care. Uh, I understand it, and that's really what makes a difference to me. And I think that this uh, this game is really underappreciated and undernoticed, and that's why I'm, uh, you know, I'm basically enjoying it and playing it and sharing it just for that reason. I don't, you know, I don't get anything uh, for this. Um, it's just a fun game. I, I, it gives you real realistic stats. Uh, you got, you know, it's got a little deep drive section, which is very cool. It's kind of Status Pro. Status Pro had that little section on the player cards or on the board itself that was like a clutch batting. Remember that? So certain players would be rated a two. It wasn't a big, huge, you know, rating of 29 or 39 or 79. It was like a two. You had a zero, a one, and a two for clutch batting. And the clutch batters would hit more doubles and they would drive in more runs. Right. And that was the so that's what the deep drive is for. It's deep drive is for the home runs and the triples and the doubles and then the fly offs. And depending on who you have, uh, you know, guys like uh, Pete Alonso are going to have really high opportunity to hit home runs. Other guys who don't hit home runs are going to have low opportunity to hit home runs. Like this guy, Lee Richard, is 0 0 to 12, and 0 0 to 12 is park effect. That means he's always rolling on the park effect. He'll only hit a home run on usually on parks that that where you can easily hit a home run on them. And that's it. This has been 25 minutes. It was supposed to be 15. I went way over. This is CP Cards and Dice for Tabletop Baseball TV. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Please join our check out our Facebook page. There's a Delphi page that the that the designer created as well. It's Deep Drive De uh, Delphi. You can create. You can look at the Deep Drive Baseball Facebook page. Um, and more and more guys are signing up and looking into this game. It's very inexpensive. You don't have to lay out $70 and $90 and $120 to get all the players. For $12, I've got everything. If I spill coffee on these, if I write on these, if I sneeze on these, if I tear these, if I lose these, guess what? I print out a brand new batch, right? And that's what I love about this. I have control over everything. And once I print it all out, I print out as I go. Um, and then I save them and I'll put them, I'll store them and I won't have to print out anymore. And I'll always have them and I can go back and replay 71 whenever I want. So, uh, that's it. So that, those are the advantages of, you know, the disadvantages, you got to have a printer, you got to have ink, you got to have uh, cardstock. I'm using 90 pound cardstock now. That's why I did these on. It's good enough. It's not too thick. And, uh, and I kind of like it. It's nice and light. The other one is like a little bit heavy, I feel. And, uh, and this works and it's lighter to handle. And I, you know, so anyway, I'm using the 90 right now. They sent it to me by accident and I said, oh, I'm not going to send it back. I usually get the 110, but this time I got the 90. So I still got 110 paper there. And, and, and but you do need those things. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, to, for this game, you need to have a little printer set up and uh, you don't need a fancy printer, but you do need a printer and you can, and, and you, you can print in black and white, but it's not going to be good. It's better to, Printing color, so this is, but there's not a lot of color ink used. There's very little. There's just the line up here. I don't know. Oh, you can't see it. Hold on a second. I'm talking to you about something you can't see. There's the line up here in red, and that's it. Everything else is black and white. But it does tell you Chicago American League was in red, and you can see Oakland is in, in green, and that gives you a little color coding for for your teams. So anyway, all right. CP cards and dice charts. Deep drive baseball. Take care. Let me know if you have any issues.